All right. Should be alive for the first time in a while. Um, I'm gonna play some Crystal Caves. Check out some of the uh, some of the top levels that have been created by uh, some other people. Um, there are over 600 levels that have been created and added to the workshop for this game, which is just incredible. Um, I've thoughtfully downloaded all the top couple of pages of uh, top levels. Most of them I have not played before. So this will be first time for most of them. Not this one. This one I've played. For some reason it was uploaded without music, but that's okay. So this is a level by Rubar. This is a remake of the essentially the very first level in uh, Secret Agent. Yeah. Which I should be better than this at because I've just spent, well not just spent, but I have spent some time uh, beta testing the game actually. So it's interesting coming back to this and seeing uh, exactly how he translated the design language of that game into this one. Hey Fairy, how's things? Um, I don't stream very often, that's probably why. Uh, interesting, okay, so... In Secret Agent, the doors are only one block in height, whereas these, in Crystal Caves, of course, they are two blocks in height. Uh, he used what was a fairly brief glitch to stack one thing on top of another. So there might be a few levels that have that sort of thing in them. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Have to come back for the, for the uh, treasure chests. We'll see. Interesting. There's a few, a few enemies that would be here that are not. Uh -huh. So in the original level in Secret Agent, this is a set of spikes that you have to run across fairly quickly. Um, no, it's not. You're not even meant to go over there, but because there's an item to collect there, we've been given brief invincibility to get there. I wonder if you can get all the way across. Yes, you can. Okay. And of course, he used anti gravity to get up to these bits. Now, I guess we wait. Yeah, things are pretty good. Um, work is still fairly quiet, as befits, I suppose, the beginning of the year. Man, these turrets fire a lot faster than the. Rocket launcher does in Secret Agent. Ooh, interesting choice of enemies here. Very interesting choice. We're going to try and jump over that. Yes, we can. Yeah, unfortunately it's not the same for everybody. Um, I actually feel quite guilty because I... So I basically do application support. And for like a public uh, website essentially. And... I'll get back to that point. This level is... I have played this one as well. I think. I, I guess I haven't finished it. So this one was created by uh, Clint... Uh, who runs the Lazy Game Reviews LGR channel. And I believe he created this level live on stream right when this game had just come out. So... Okay, I certainly don't remember it at all. Um, yeah, so my work is... actually quite busy. Except not for my part. Because I just I I mainly talk to public users of our thing. Um, all the programmers are very busy, of course, and I feel a bit guilty about that. But uh, it's the way it works.
Now, what we should do is let this snake get over here. That didn't quite work out, but... That's why we have multiple lives. It is really strange coming back to this game, having played mainly Secret Agent for so long. Because um, there's some subtle differences, obviously some very different uh, collectibles. Oh, great. And I'm basically just remembering that certain stuff is here. Yeah, I'm trying to. Bird is going to be tricky. Got him. That guy takes five shots, which is a lot of ammo. But I'm going to assume he's left us enough. But I'm also assuming. I'm also assuming that spike is going to fall on us when we run into here, which is why I've come back down here. No, what about that one? That one. I don't think I can grab that without getting hurt, and I can't jump up there either. That's weird. But again, this is not a this is not a serious, you know spend days and days pouring over the tiniest details sort of level. That's how you're meant to do it. Okay. Oh no. I'm going to use that to kill that guy. And probably this guy as well, but I'm gonna run out of time. Do I have... Ah, uh, no, I'm going to miss that one. Yep. So, unlike the original Crystal Caves, where the fruit basically spawned at entirely random points during a level, in HD, the levels you create, you can actually set where they spawn. So, their positions have been very carefully chosen in most levels. That's a little bird. Okay, we've missed some... Yeah, we've missed some crystals. And one of these. I don't think I can finish this. I can't... Okay, I can finish it. I cannot grab that key. Because I was meant to jump down here and shoot all them instead of go over that way. So, I don't have enough health to go grab that key. Unfortunately... It's down there, just more treasure. Okay. Unfortunately, that means I'm not going to get anywhere near a high score for this level, but... Otherwise, I can see why it's a popular level. It was... It's nice and simple. It was a really good, um... Really good use of stuff, really good flow. Um, yeah, that's a really fun little level. Okay. So, at the end of 2020, we did a advent calendar thing. Well, when I say we, I mean everyone who was playing the game at the time. Um... We all submitted levels. Uh, we signed up basically to do... Uh, each of us kind of picked a day in December and made sort of an advent calendar roster of levels. So there'll be a few of those in this. And this is the most popular of those levels. Aha, ice. 
So there's quite a few new features in the game in the HD version, um, including ice, a few new enemies, these blue flame things. Um, quite a few levels. Where do I go? Can I... Yeah, okay. Ow, that's a bat. Did not see the bat. Should be able to get all the treasure. Let's just jump back down here again. Yep, there's a few. So this is a less linear level than... Okay, maybe not less linear, but certainly less restrictive in terms of the path. Which is only very subtly different from being linear, I understand that, but... Careful with this. Okay, nearly died, but that's okay. These little disappearing platforms are also a new feature. Probably don't need that ammo, but there we go. Is that Danger Slide actually going to fall on us? No, it's not. Have I turned? No. Where do I turn them off? Are they controlled by this same switch? No, you just have to run through. Okay. Let's get him at this. Interesting. Okay. Cool little level. Guard Post by Ruba. Another one by Ruba. He is a really prolific level creator, not just for this game, but also secret agent as well. Um, a challenging level that's not hard for a change. A level that doesn't require crazy skills. I know, right? It's crazy. It's challenging, but not hard. Let's give it a go. Uh, okay. Side? No. If this were my level, I would have put one of the fruit spawns here. That's me. Ah, uh, where was that? <laughs> okay. Interesting, so we get the treasure key fairly quickly. Don't have a lot of ammo, so I'm going to conserve it pretty well. Interesting little... Okay. Okay, so... That's, yep, that'll be the on switch for that uh, platform. Let's shoot that one. Okay, I think there's more ammo available than needed first.
I love the wacky combination of slimes up there. And I like this jump. That's a sweet jump. Okay, so we can grab some treasure here now. Uh, let's go down here and check this out. Ah! Not sure if he turned around randomly or if there's like a barrier here. There might be. In the YouTube upload for this video, I will put some um, flame stamps through to the into the levels. Ah! And their names and who made them, of course. I'm in a bad position. Interesting timing puzzle down there. So with these little eggs, you shoot them and then there's a total of five of them in each level, or a maximum of five in each level, and they spell out the word bonus. And for the longest time as a kid, I really struggled with those because I thought you had to collect them in exact order. As in, you had to collect the B, then the O, then the N, etc. Apparently in this game, you can collect them in any order. Um, so I needlessly stressed myself out as a child over that, so that's great. Cool. little level Ruba. I like it. So, Wolf Mines by Dukhulsh Farm. Okay, I think this is gonna be... I love it. Okay. I'm pretty sure what this is is the first level of the original Wolfenstein 3D game adapted as a platformer layout. Because these are the cells where you start. And then the rest gets a bit hazy, but... And of course, it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one. -one. Um, yeah. That was poorly coordinated. Um, but it's an interesting and really effective way to design um, levels for this game. I use a lot of inspiration for my levels from other games as well, um, or even just original levels from this game. Um, like, I'll take a copy of them, I'll find a map of them online, and then basically recreate it. And it's a really easy way to get just a basic structure. Are these guys? Yes, they do. Of course they do. So I have to jump up there. Okay. I'm gonna leave the snakes alone. I guess I turn this one on. Got all the gems, crystals. But I think the red switch was directly above us somewhere. So let's see if we can get back. This will be a slow little exchange because I have to dodge these little war guys. Let's go 
sure I can dodge by jumping up through that way. Okay, there's going to be quite a lot of back and forth in this level. Oh, of course we can stand on those. Good. Good, good, good. So. That was dumb. So, I'm not going to try and set any particular completion uh, targets for these. I'm not going to try and do perfect health. I'm not going to try and get everything. I'm not going to try and kill everything. Um, those are tasks that you do when you're obsessed by levels. And can't get enough of them. And that's not going to be my goal here tonight. Tonight I just want to play some really cool levels. And just check them out. If I die, I'll probably just go into the next level. Just level two up here. Having said that, no, I want to finish this one now. I've invested... I'm too invested in it now. Alright, let's make this quick. I shouldn't get hit by these guys, because I know they're there now. Okay. It has been too long since I've played this. I'm so used to uh, Secret Agent now. Um, I spent a ridiculous amount of time playing that game in particular um, because I helped beta test it um, for about as long as I've played this game in the span of a couple of months. So, or it, despite both games being on essentially the same engine, there is so much that is different between the two. There is so much that's different between the two that I'm actually struggling a little bit to play this game uh, super well. I'm getting all the fruit this time though. Um, one particular huge change is that... Is that in Crystal Caves, if you have a corridor that is one block high, you can jump out from the end of it, whereas you cannot do that in Secret Agent. Um, there's simply a, a slight difference that was chosen by the original designers of the game, and it just makes the two games just... just different enough to really mess up your muscle memory, essentially. So we've, we've hit the green switch, we can now go back down here and open the... open, go through the green door. Oh, which is up here, of course. Now the red one is down there. Yep, okay. See how many of these treasure chests I can get without uh... embarrassing. Without embarrassing myself too much, I guess. Back up here for these chests. So, like I said, I have played some of these top levels. Um, but not all of them. This one is completely new to me. This is this is a level that I've seen for about six minutes in total, so... Absolutely learning as I go. I don't think I checked this side. The gems, but there aren't any. That's okay. Alright, I think we are free and clear. Has he put them all in the middle? Yes, he has. Yep. Uh, 
a good level designer, you can trust to be consistent with things like that. You start to expect where certain things are. And it's really satisfying when you feel like you've got a, a grasp on how someone thinks, how they design a level, and you jump and expect a thing to be there, and it absolutely is. Where is the exit? Oh, it's back down here, isn't it? Speaking of expecting things being in places. Okay. Another really cool level. Some kind of map by Barn Grat. Just a map I made in a game I loved as a kid. Maybe fun. Cool. Let's check it out. Interesting. Another very closed level. So there's been quite a few people who have created levels for this game and for Secret Agents. Who mentioned that, you know, these are these are games that I played as a kid, I really like it. Um, and it's really great to see. It's just the perfect nostalgia trip. Um, I never drew levels myself, except for just like single screen scenes from like... Um, Commander Keen was my sketch game of choice. Um, but a mapper that we've seen a bit, Rubar, um, he loved uh, Secret Agent as a kid. And a lot of... Okay, up on the top right there is going to be... What was his name? Barngrat? That will be his initials. I love that. Classic. Um, Rubar is an interesting fellow. He was really keen on this game when it came out and played a lot of it. Obviously, he made a fair few levels. Um, I like this chamber. That's a really cool idea. Uh, but the game he mostly played and mostly raves about is Secret Agent. And during the testing process, uh, beta testing for Secret Agent, I was so... Okay, they don't fall. I was just so looking forward to the day when we could announce that game, Secret Agent. It actually came out basically as a complete surprise to most people. Uh, its development was not broadcast beforehand. So keeping that secret and then being able to talk about it after a while was first frustrating, then really satisfying. Good timing. But then for Rubar in particular, I really love the day that, you know, this game, uh, Secret Agent got announced, because he, that was his game as a kid, and he had made, words. I really, I've stuffed myself up there. Let's restart. Okay, so note to self, we can't go down there until we've opened that red door. So when Secret Agent was released, Rubar went and had a look at all his, uh, I guess, wherever he kept his uh, drawings as a kid and pulled out sheet after sheet after sheet of just like sketched out crystal caves and Secret Agent levels. And quite a few of the Secret Agent levels from him are basically adapted from drawings he made as a kid. And those are some of the... They're not the greatest, most intricate levels ever made, but they are super fun, they're really casual, they're really easy to play, and they just really do capture the the feel of, you know, what, what that game would have been like um, if it had been made, you know, 30 years later with the internet and Steam and all that. I really love this little cabin and that that extra that um that extra touch of putting the author's initials in the level. That's just that screams pure, you know, classic apogee. Just nearly got hit by that bird. Okay. 
So we need... Right, so we open the green door. And then we have to go all the way back around. Now, quite a few of these levels have no music. Um, when this game was initially released, uh, so in the level editor for this game, you can pick from um, a few of the different songs that were created for this game, this remake specifically. Um, unfortunately, the default option was off, no music, which means that especially a lot of the earlier, uh, that, that was actually fixed to have music by default uh, eventually. But a lot of the earlier levels that were made have no music as a result. Simply because the makers just didn't have, you know, didn't have time to think to... You know, it didn't occur to them during the process of doing everything else uh, in designing a level to turn on music, but that's fine. Um, and that was changed later on, of course. Okay, we've got all the crystals. I want to go back and get some more um, treasure, because if we fall down there now, we won't be able to get back up. Don't think there was any treasure in the death chamber up top. It's a bit down here. Is there any back here? Yes. I've already hit that. I've already opened that one. Cool. Okay. Another really cool, some kind of map. Tutorial 101. Learn the basics of Crystal Caves, help Milo get out of the storage room. So, this level is made by an author called Bloody Avenger. Um, maybe I won't say exactly who he is, but it makes sense for him to create a tutorial level. And that really does exemplify the the really this is a good level all down to its simplest parts. You got a few moving parts, you got the elevator. Um I would maybe have put a treasure chest here as well. Just to emphasize the cyclic nature of these levels. The really best the really good design ones um are more or less in a circuit and you go through it once to collect all the gems, and then you get the key right at the end. Then you do another circle to collect all the treasure. That's the ideal layout for this game, essentially. So. Why is a level that simple? One of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... The seventh best level, uh, best level in the game. Um, that comes down to the way that these levels get filtered to the top. So I'll talk about that in a moment. Foxy. Original dream level designed by myself back in the 90s in the back pages of my maths book. Starts off cruisy but ends with a back. Okay. So this will be another level that was created someone created by someone. Ooh, I like this. Yikes. Okay, pretty straightforward so far. So, how does a workshop level get to be in the top list? It's pretty simple. It's based on how many people vote for it in a positive manner. Okay, have I just... I think I've just screwed up. Yep. 
No, I haven't. There's another block there. Excellent. So, the more people that finish a level, the more people vote on it. And generally, the polite thing to do is to vote positively on the level. I expect most levels would have a positive vote. Now what that means is that, like I said, it's based on, you can, I think you, there is a way to vote, ah! Okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna shoot this guy before he causes any more issues. I think there is a way to vote on levels through the Steam Workshop's website itself. Um, but a handful of people at most would use that. Mostly people vote when they finish a level. And in order to finish a level, you must finish the level, which means it can't be super, super difficult. There are plenty of very, very difficult levels in this game. Uh, created by workshop users, and some of them are some of the greatest levels, but because they don't get finished that often, fewer people vote for them, and so fewer people play them, because if you go to the top list, you know, that's how that, all that works. So the reason short levels like that tutorial get really, really high in the list is because, well, they're easier levels, more people tend to finish them. Interesting. So down there is one of the hardest enemies in the game. So we're going to let him turn around and drop down. Okay. He only shot one thing at us. This is a really cute level too, by the way. This is... I'm enjoying this. It is very linear, but it is exactly the kind of level you'd make if you... Ah, this is the bag that you finish off with. So here's the vote. So you choose whether it's a bad level, or whether you would recommend skipping it, or whether it's a great level. Generally you go great. Unless there's something massively wrong with the level. Okay. Another kind of celebrity level, um, in the same way that this one was created by uh, Clint of LGR. ADG Map Zero One. So ADG is awesome DOS games. Uh, Gemini is. I'm fairly sure his name is Chris. I'm really sorry if I've not remembered your name correctly there. Um, he is the owner of the awesome DOS games. No, that's not the name of the channel. It's Pixel Amusement. And ADG is a series of videos on that channel about older games. So, like he says, this was a level that he created. Uh, as a quick demo when talking about this remake of the original game. So it'll be another fairly simple level, I would hope. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, this will be a breeze. So, I strongly recommend checking out his channel. How do I get up there? Of course. Yep. Nice. That one was unnecessary. I... Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, I really do recommend checking out his channel. He does... Um, really good retrospective reviews of 
lots of older, mostly DOS games. Um, a lot of early Windows games as well. And he's got some really good, uh, really good perspectives on it. Um, a lot of those games. He did a fairly... Oh, that's cool. Yep, okay. That's how you get up there. Uh, he did a really good review of not just the original game, but also the remake. When it came out, so or shortly after it came out. So, yeah, check out that channel. It's really... Really worth your time. If you're if you're sitting there enjoying watching me play this, um, I mean, first off, go buy this game and play it, but also check out his channel. It's um, ADG or Pixel Amusement is what you want to search for. I don't know how I timed that correctly, but I'll take it. I am probably not going to get that cherry. But that's okay. Yeah, that guy's gonna be a problem. He'll stop around here, I think. That'll do. Ah, okay, so I can see a gravity thing down there. I just want to check over here first. So pretty tight on ammo in this level, but that's that's okay. Um, I think I'll wait because I don't want to spend the next ten seconds jumping and dodging the uh, turret up there. Okay. And we can always still get back up there because the uh, this platform is moving. And I guess I guess we'll wait for that to come back around. So I will say it is very difficult to design a level for this game where. Where moving up and down on a platform like this is a crucial part of it. It's a crucial part of the navigation of this level, for example. But it is difficult to design a level around that. I'm not going to make that jump. That's what the anti-gravity is for. Okay, let's, let's give it its dues. It's difficult to design a level around these moving platforms, moving up and down, or, or left and right for that matter, um, that don't just have massive dead spots in them, of just sort of waiting for platforms to appear. Um, the only real meaningful ways around that are... Um, I guess shortening the distance for the platforms to go. Okay, that's not how I expected that to go at all. Yeah, shortening the movement of the platforms or... having a big enough area and creating multiple platforms so you get like a moving conveyor belt effect kind of thing. Um, that often results in a less interesting level though. Because it takes away the challenge, it just becomes, oh, that's the place where you go up and down. Um, so this, this I don't mind. This is... A lot of levels with this are made with that in mind, so it becomes almost a punishment to have to wait for the uh, platform to return. It actually kind of becomes part of the gameplay, so... There is probably a super quick and easy way to finish this level. 
but it would batter. It, it, it just basically comes down to timing. Right, okay, that makes more sense. He meant to do that. Now, where is... Where's the fruit spawn? Ah. Oh well. So plenty of ammo. Right, now we grab the we grab the gravity and we get out of here. So I'm personally not a huge fan of the way that typically plays out. Uh, a lot of custom levels in this game depend on um, those big pickups being Uh, collected at a certain time. And this particular game, I don't think lends itself very well to levels where the order of operations, as in what you do, what you collect first, really matters. I don't think that's a great fit for this game. I think Crystal Cave is more about puzzle platforming um, than anything else. Um, but that's just my opinion. Lost level E4L12. Okay. Oh, of course, okay. So this is this is a level by the developer of this game. Um, this was a... I guess a draft level for the fourth new episode, which didn't quite make the cut. I have played this. So, for a level that didn't quite make the cut, it's still pretty pretty interesting. And very complete, so I guess he sort of finished that up a bit. Which is fine. And because this is a level made by Primosh, it's gonna have his sort of design language. I'm being very cautious, I'm expecting some traps here and there. Yep, there we go. There it is. Any level that Primosh creates where he puts in a lot of spikes, some of them are gonna fall on your head. That is how he works. And this is an interesting little name. So this is... This sort of arrangement is kind of a callback to one of the harder levels in the first episode, I think. Um, and it's really fun to see him experiment with it. Uh, this is much kinder than the level that this is a throwback to. In that it's... You know, you can navigate back and forth through it. So, that anti-gravity... We don't actually need that to get back out of here, so I'm just going to double check to see if there's anything else that I should do. No? Okay. So we grab the anti-gravity, we go up there, and finish the rest of the level. That's how that works. And we make sure to go to the left. That's all she wrote for that. Cool. Yeah. Another fun little level. Not very challenging, but a good example level, essentially. So that's the last level. Command Key Level 9 by Lunic. Isn't all of Level 9 the general spirit of the level is here? Is this going to be from the original game? As in King 1? Yes, this is a keen one level. Um, so this will be one of the... Yep, 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 yep. 
So this is one of the little, um, because <laughs> because this isn't game one, we don't need that platform for this quite so much. This is one of those little game levels where. Very cool. I like the adaptation. And there was a banana there. This is one of those levels that, uh, I guess, a sort of one of the liminal levels, I want to say, um, where you're just passing through to collect um, a couple of points and then maybe some information. So I wonder what he's put at the top um, in the place of the info point. I can see what he's already used as one of the gargs, one of the enemies. And that's a cool little puzzle, jumping to get all of those gems without getting hurt. Okay, I guess that's it. That's cool. So again, not really a, a difficult level, it's more a demonstration and an experiment in creating a level, which is totally fine. Um, and it's fun! And this is kind of fun too. So there's a funny thing that the developers of Portal mentioned as a thing that happened in developing that game, in developing Portal. There's a level near the end of the game that is essentially a complete repeat of one of the earlier levels in the game. Um, where the later version of it, they actually changed up. They changed one of the surfaces in that level um, so that you could fire your portal gun, create a portal, and get out of that level. Um, and they described it as making the level so it feels like the player is cheating because it's a thing that you couldn't do before, but it's the same level. Uh, and this feels the same kind of way to me, this little bit here. This is, of course, in Keen 1. You are too tall to fit through little spaces like this. So, in the original, you meant to go all the way up and then come over the top and then come down. Um, so this little gap here, that's absolutely in the original game level, um, but the puzzle was opening the door to get through there. Doesn't matter a lot for this level, but that's that's what made this that's what this level made me think of. Cool, simple enough. Milo's mining madness by oh, it's another barn grad level. Mine that branches in all directions. Will he find all the crystals? And what about the guarded treasure? Ch okay. So this is going to be a level. Wow, I love the design of this. There's... Okay, there's a lot going on. And it's a very non-linear level, this is cool. There's a lot going on, I'd say this is maybe... Uh, if this was a level that I created, I'd say this is maybe a little bit busy. I'd want to get rid of some of the extra little details. Um, but I still love it. I really like the look. The difficulty is going to come mainly because of how non-linear it is. I'm going to have to try and forge my own path through it. Try and figure out where I need to go. I guess I've gotten lucky by coming up here first so I can hit the, um, these two levers to open the doors. Lever? Lever? The important thing is you know which one, I, what word I mean. So... I like this. It's a very simple little puzzle with the worms, just making sure you don't get hit, but that's, that's a fun little thing. 
Now, I'm clearly not meant to go down there just yet. Gonna ignore the arrow telling me to go down there. Because if one of the... If two of the levers were uh, somewhere up north... Ah, okay, don't, no, no. So the other door uh, switch will be down the bottom somewhere. This is the guarded treasure area. I like this. And it's arranged so that you could, in theory, grab all the chests. But that, that power up directly above is how you're meant to do it. You're meant to grab that and then shoot them all. So, we'll come back. We'll respect the idea of the, uh, of the level. Cool, okay. Okay. Turn that on, whatever that turns on. Plenty of ammo to deal with. So now we go down here. Okay, so we turn on that platform. And now we do the fun thing, because we can jump up back here. Very satisfying. I will also mention that I did not miss the the RGB joke. Uh, that was coded in the crystals up here. The crystals here were red, these ones were green, and then these ones were blue. I get it. Where was the exit? Was that down here? No. There it is. Okay. Full marks, Barngrat. I love that level. Really deserves to be in the top list. Uh, the top list of levels. Okay, another advent calendar one by Matsu. Don't kill the sock puppet monster, it's actually Milo's dog who got to Milo's sock present first. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, not only is the level without music, it's also in the dark. Which, the combination of those two things is deeply unsettling. Ah, uh, there's the light switch. Cool, okay. Okay, and so the uh, the floor of this level is a red-green thing. So this is, this is another Christmas level, this is another advent calendar one. Um, and it actually looks like there's... Okay, cool. There's actually quite a lot of advent calendar levels in the top... Uh, top level list. Which makes sense, because the advent calendar le um, marathon, that was actually a really great thing for this, this game. Um, a lot of people came out of the woodwork and played the levels, it was a really good thing. Really fun to see what everyone came up with, too. <laughs> there we go, I'm expecting those spikes to fall. I'm glad I didn't shoot that guy, because I am absolutely out of ammo now. Yeah, I like it. That's Like, it's basic, but it's a really... It's a fun level. And that was the point of this, of the whole Advent Calendar thing. Pretty fun. So 
so that was 20. So Super Mario won one by apostrophe. Level's name says it all. Okay, so this will be a remake of the first level of... <laughs> yep. I love it. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, the pipes don't do the magic thing that they do in Mario. Okay, that's a really cute idea. Um, someone actually did the same thing for Secret Agent as well. Um, oh, there's no, like, is that, like, fruit at the top? No. Yeah, that's cute. Um, someone else did a similar level in Secret Agent where they used the actual teleporters to, to move around the level. It was still split up into several, um, horizontal strips like that. Um, but the teleporter in the game lets you go between the levels as well. Uh, but this level, I think, has the, the distinction of being first for that idea for these games. So, another advent calendar level. This is the first one that was made. So this would have been December the 1st, 2020, um, by Emberheart Games. So the, the developer did this one. Yep. Let's check it out. Of course. I've got your number, pretty much. I know how you work. Didn't quite make that jump, but that's okay. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, I may... I may not survive this level. I'll give it one more go. I'm not going to try and complete every level. Um, let's just say if I die twice, then I'll I'll give up on the level. So I don't want to spend you know three hours trying to finish the same level over and over when it really. Really, I'm just here to have fun. So I think we can get up here. I think we're meant to grab that and then come up here. Yeah. That's, that's how you're meant to do that. Now, where do we go next? I'll we'll shoot down through that. Okay, he's going to make us jump over that a few times. Oh, that's the start again. Okay. I have played this level. But it was more than a Christmas ago, <clears throat> so I do not remember anything about it, essentially. Oh, okay. Right. 
Right. I'm gonna go with that one, and that one. That one. Four. Three. Okay, we have two shots left. So that was interesting. I think my shot hit the the very corner of this, but still took out the uh, still blew up the egg. Interesting. Okay. So it only took two goes. That I would say is ideal. Still a bit of backtracking. That's okay. You had to put the ice there, you had to put the spikes on the ice. Just couldn't help yourself. That's harder than it should be. Alright, that's it. Done. What are the trickier levels that we've touched on tonight? Lights of Magic. Okay! Uh, you might recognize the author of this one. So this is a level that I created um, when a lot of the new features came into this game. So the lights, not the light switch, but some the light dependent platforms, the platforms that moved in and out, the fans, all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can see with the light on, there's no way across there, but with the light off, these little platforms appear. So this level I designed is a kind of uh, a fair bit of a challenge actually. The idea was that you could turn the light on just to see what was going on every now and then, but there was no way to finish the level with the light on. You had to turn the light back off to go and do the thing. Um, and I guess lots of people finished it and were quite happy with it. So we had to turn the f that fan off to get out there, then we had to turn the light off. Yep. To collect these gems. And then interestingly we turn the light on, so we can go down here. And then I decided to be cruel not to let you have the light on for this little bit. Right, of course, and because... This gap is too big to jump normally. The point of this was to demonstrate that A, the fans do not really work uh, through solid barriers, and B, you can set up much longer jumps. And this bit was fun. This is kind of a um, just sort of anything. Look, no hands. I'll have a drink. And then this bit lights off again. So this this section I made a little bit harder. You can see you have to jump off this platform because it doesn't go the whole way. Light on to see what's going on. Two temporary platforms. And now this one I am super proud of. Because you don't the light really doesn't matter. What does matter is you get across here using the fan because you do not have enough time to run across there with the fan off so yeah that was fun and apparently enough people liked it and finished it to vote it really high in the thing right just before moving on I need to shot some blinds because it's actually Oh, 
Okay. Moving on. So this is the last advent calendar level by Lucky Strike. Okay, interesting description. So the mention of Christmas ornaments. Um, they don't look like Christmas ornaments at the moment, but if you load this game, basically I think during December, um, the pickups that aren't crystals, like the little shovel, the candle, all that sort of stuff, um, are actually a different spray. They're like little Christmas presents and all that kind of stuff. I think we'll go down there last of all. Or maybe we're meant to do it straight away. Let's check it out straight away. Interesting. So, in the original game, and in fact, every level in the regular single player campaign for HD remake, the very consistent level level design language was that you only had one door of each color. So, when I pull this lever, which door will open? I am thinking possibly the one on the left, or both. Okay. Uh, I forget how they're linked, actually. They... It's been too long since I've played this game. That was an absolutely pointless bit of commentary. Okay, we're meant to drop down that pipe the end of that house. Well, let's continue. Ah, uh, that's nasty. That is nasty. Okay, we definitely drop down into that house. Next. Okay, this is gonna be... Yeah, okay, th this bit is kinda nasty. I will be slightly lucky if I actually finish this without dying. Let's give it a go. Cool, I actually got him. Okay, so we turn that turret off, that's good. So we grab that... that mushroom. Okay. Now we get out of here. So those signs across the top, where they say ho ho, they actually say wo ho, because the full sign is wormhole. But I guess for the purposes of the advent calendar levels, they say ho ho. Not a bad level, a bit tricky. Trickier than most that are in the top list. So, Stu created the Amigara Fault. Oh, that's lovely. So, first level that he's made, so this will be another simple, nostalgic trip. I like it. That's interesting. Do we have to run through there at some point? We will find out. Maybe not, because this does feel like a very... a very simple sort of, you know, throw some things around at the, uh... Well, he's included a worm. Oh. 
Wow, okay, I suck at this. <laughs> Alright, well, we know what to do now. Works if you're actually smart about it. So the exit just acts as just a regular block if you don't have all the crystals. Now that'll be the on-off switch for this platform, but yeah, we can still jump to it anyway. Triceratops, that's going to be tricky. Oh, it takes it that way. Oh boy. And we're out of, we're out of ammo. There's no more ammo in the level, is there? No, I was meant to come up here. But now I can't get all those extra things because because I've collected all the crystals, I can't get past the door again. That's a that's that is kind of a nasty little trap, but for such an easy level, that's fun. Swap. Advent calendar level four by assassin. Give it a go. Oh, that's different. So there's going to be an anti-gravity thing somewhere. Right, so the Edmund calendar levels are a bit... ...are a bit different. They are going to be a bit harder than the rest of the ones that I'm going to check out tonight. Yikes. Okay. Simply because they're... not because they're easy, but because a lot of people did play them because they were out of calendar levels. That's that's what's going on here. I like the use of all the different styles of uh, crystals from the different episodes. Uh, I should be able to get that. Um, I'm not going to go back for the key. I'm not going to do that. Not in this one. Cool level, though. Yeah. Scrungy Escape 2 by Stoke Cape. The underground passage is caved in. No time to rest. Let's give it a go. Lots of ammo. Lots of danger. Okay. 
very open level. Just being super cautious in case these spikes fall on us. was surprisingly tough. Um, so that that's a really cool idea for a puzzle in a level. It's just... I would probably have put a safe rest spot somewhere in the middle of that. But that's clearly not this guy's style. So these snakes I'm going to strategically kill, so I have plenty of space to walk. So we're going to have to hold right and do a... Uh, okay. Cool. Okay, pretty quick, pretty basic level. A couple of really good ideas in there for traps and uh, and things. As a level designer, I wish it had been a little easier to see what was coming. Like that that last little bit was great because I got to stand up in the corner and just sort of see and plan where I was going to go. Um, that one was maybe a little mean in its design, but for a first level, that was really cool. Foxy 002 by Foxy, another classic level from the back of the... Okay. Another level... Oh, where, what? Oh, okay. I'm down here. I, I see how this works. Of course, the green mushrooms are meant to kill you. But if you've got the, if you picked up the red mushroom, you're essentially uh, invulnerable. Okay. Fire. Wow. Okay. That was unintentional. I did not intend to time that so perfectly. In fact, I'm glad I recognized what was going on and jumped. <laughs> okay, so this level clearly takes its inspiration from a couple of... ...earlier levels. It's very leading, very simple, but again... to run and grab that ammo. Yeah, I like this. This is... This is fun. I love that sort of trick of having to... having to run in and grab ammo and then run back out so that you can attack the enemy. Um, that's a really fun little thing. So this, this P power-up will give us essentially unlimited ammo. What do I need to shoot? Right. Oh boy. Okay, I hesitated too long with the power up right now. Do I have enough ammo to finish this level normally now? Wow, okay. 
I'll give it one more cycle. In theory, I could have shot out a bit more of the uh, these blocks to let him cycle out here so I can jump past him, but... Oh, another of these, hey? I like this style of putting the blocks in different places and having to jump around and find them. I really like that. Yep. Okay, so this one was a mishmash of a couple of different original levels from episode 1 and some cool new ideas. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, Retro Zen versus Dry Humor. Um, okay, so I have played this one. This one was a bit of an in-joke. Um, between a couple of mappers who were also streamers at the time. I don't remember this one being particularly easy. But I do remember being at an alright kind of level. Let's... Let's see if I can justify those two opposing thoughts. I don't think RetroSense played this game in a while. I love the contrast of having the, the big open area to start in and then this sort of maze. Okay, so we clearly run through here, turn that turret off. Yep. Then we can jump back through here. Yep. This is a cool this is a cool design. I love it. I like this level. Uh where do we go next? Here I guess. Ah, there's lots of them. I may not finish this one. Ah! Now I remember what I liked about this level. It's this sort of... It was kind of a timing puzzle to figure out how you went about activating those moving platforms. That's what this one's about. And, of course, just narrowly avoiding getting shot by that thing. And then the problem was, this one was on a slightly different... Yeah. So, I wouldn't call this a super polished level. Um, but it definitely had some very cool ideas in it. I will say that about it. I have the ammo to kill this guy now. Or rather, to kill that guy and also do other things. Like kill this guy. Um. Okay. That's kind of terrifying. Hello, everyone. Um, I have never been raided before. Welcome. Um, so, I'm playing Crystal Caves HD, so this is a remake of the original Crystal Caves game from about 1991, 92. And I'm checking out some of the 
top-rated uh, custom levels. <laughs> um. Yeah, hello, welcome, welcome to my humble little stream. Auto Milo, okay. This is a really fun level. Um, another one by Rubar. Um, just, just see. Maybe you do have to move a little bit? Okay. So I think some of the physics has been adjusted. This level doesn't work quite as it should. Let's see if I can help it along a little bit. Wow, okay. Okay, I think some of the distances have been adjusted. Um, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that one. That's a real shame, because that is a that is a fun level. Um, so I guess hello, Full Tilt Mama, Euphoric Mania, Warrior Princess, um, Toyaka. Am I saying that right? Milo's Factory Frenzy, but ah, another Barn Grot level. This one should be good. Let's give it a go. Yeah, so this... This remake was... Uh, this came out in 2020. And was actually the first game that I streamed. Um, I specifically got into streaming to play with this, uh, this game and, um, okay, I don't have enough ammo to do that. Yeah, I'll have a cookie. I mean, they're on offer. I don't have enough ammo to kill that guy. I've done something very wrong here. This way. So the sounds are more or less original. Um, the actual sound effects themselves are recorded from the original um, PC speaker beeps and so on. The music is, is new. So the original game had no music. Um, it was created specifically for the remake of this um, by, I believe his name is James Paddock. And he does a lot of cool stuff too. I think he does streams of making music. Um, okay. Do I take the platform? Yes, I should. I have to to open a door. All right. There we go. I do have time. Okay, yeah, that was a cool little level. What's next? Door space number nine by Power Stone Zero Five. So we're to combine tight corridors and wide open areas. Okay, cool. So this 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 won't be based on any specific game or level. This is just. 
Ouch. Where do I want to go first? So, Roy here, uh, combined with the other part of that sign, that's meant to say Kilroy was here. Yeah, okay, this is so open-ended, I am lost. Um, clearly we're going to have to turn that turret off to be able to grab that bonus egg and the key. Just waiting for one of these rocks to- yep, yeah, there we go, to get up and start walking around. Let's let the back do its own thing. What's next? I think we shoot that to let this platform come down. And now we go back up. Check all these for getting crystals. There's one. We'll come back and go do that bit, but... First thing to do is open that door. Uh, no. There is no remake of King just yet. Long story short, there are some... Licensing issues, shall we say. Unfortunately with King. Okay, cool, so that's... Okay, a really important level design element for me is being able to see the uh, the effects, the results of what you're doing. And having the switch for a door visible to... Sorry, near the door that it opens, so you can see what's going on. Like, even just out of the corner of your eye, you see, okay, that's open. That's a really... Um, a really sweet little design trick. That should happen more often. Uh, so back to Keen. A few people have created fan episodes for Keen um, using mods and and all that sort of stuff. But there isn't there isn't an official remake, and there isn't one planned, to my knowledge. That's kind of sneaky. Hiding that'll be the switch for the uh, the turret down the bottom. Hiding it behind the danger zone is interesting. Very careful maneuvering there. Now, did we come back here yet? Then we have to do grab those. Okay, cool. So the level's now done. Except for the last few gems that'll... No, not the, not the last few gems. We've got the last few gems. But now we go down here. And that turret will be turned off. And now comes the victory lap. Grabbing all the treasure. Okay. You did really well with this level. I like this one. This is... The really open air beat is a little bit reminiscent of a Crystal Caves level that I really don't like. Um, I think it's one of the early ones in Episode 2 that is essentially completely open. Um, there's platforms going everywhere, there's hidden, the Kaizo blocks everywhere. This is a much better use of open space and a platformer level than one of the original levels of this game. Um, 
And if you want any higher praise than that, I don't know what to tell you. This is a really cool feature as well. So there's this walking rock down here. Um, and I was a little bit concerned about that being a blind fall into it. Um, but he's put uh, little platforms here. So you fall down there to grab that thing and you're safe. You don't end up dying because you've hit that accidentally. The question now is, how the hell do we get out of here? Where's the exit? It's in the top right. Okay. For someone's very early attempt at creating levels, this is excellent. This is a really cool level. I have just screwed that up. Yeah, I think there was a Switch game. Um, I don't have a Switch though, so I... Okay. Lost space number 9. Love it. Who made that level? Power Stone. Love your work, mate. Alright. Zelmite Mine by David N. A remake of Zelmite Mine from S Special Agents? A level for a remake of Crystal Caves that's a remake of a tribute to the game and a game that was a remake of its follow-up. Okay. Special Agent. I, I don't think he means Secret Agent. I don't recognize this layout. I don't think it's a Secret Agent thing. I guess Special Agent was something different. Oh, that's, that's, that's mean. Yeah, I'm... I'm not any clearer myself. This is a tough level. As in, this is a fairly... How do I get that? Anti-gravity. There it is. Now we wait. Okay, let's open this door. And that was a bat, so I guess I can stay on the lookout for other bats. Okay, I think the difficulty of this level is going to have come from wherever the original level design is from, whatever game Special Agent is. I guess maybe that's that, that... Yikes, that was a longer fall than I expected. Special Agent, I guess, must be some fan remake of Secret Agent. I have plenty of ammo to burn. Fortunately. Okay. Alright, not a bad level. After all, um, it's definitely not a traditional Crystal Caves design language level. There is a lot going on here. Um, but a cool adaptation from 
Whatever the source material is. Where's the... Oh, it's at the top, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Not bad. Remake of Zelmite Mine from Special Agent. Special Agent must be its own thing, because the levels in Secret Agent were not named. So Zelmite Mine will be the level from... Okay. And it was a level for a remake of Booster Caves that's a remake of a tribute to the game in a game that was a remake of its follow-up. Alright. Green by Stokeape. Take your time and watch your step. Okay. Breathing Grax. Gotcha. Message received. Okay, we're clearly not meant to go down there at any point. We're clearly meant to... Probably shoot these guys strategically, because we have 40 ammo. Okay. Challenge received. I think they do too. This is a very green level. So on this platform, the spike is in a slightly different place. Okay, what else in this? How have they done that? Oh, because they're, they're placed on... On not solid ground. That's how that's happened. Ah! Spike. So this guy you can actually shoot, it's just a little bit difficult and random and time consuming. You have to shoot his eyes off. You can only damage the eyes when they're open, and that is randomized. Each eye takes two shots, and then the main body takes another two. Okay, I was worried about these guys. Come out of there. Get your hands up. Okay. Oh, I just jumped on a spike. Okay. This is this is this is the mean level. But I don't think I don't think he'd mind me saying so. Okay. So we literally dropped down there. How the hell do I get up there? Can I shoot from... Okay, I'm probably gonna die. I tried. Alright, we'll give this one one more go. Nice and slow.
Say the time to shoot things. As we get the opportunity to. I might just leave this guy here. He's not really a major issue. <sighs> this guy's an issue though. Come back down here. He's gonna play coy. I guess we have the ammo to spare. Right. Okay, we took a bit of damage, that's okay. Let's stay up here for a moment. Shoot those guys. Is there something over here? No. But there will be that fruit spawn there. Okay. The level is called green. De that was definitely green. Might only do a couple more. This has been two hours essentially. Oh, it's another power stand level. Advent Calendar 11. Milo has encountered a space igloo with an unusually festive vibe emanating around it. Should be no issues with investigating it, right? Happy holidays. Let's give it a go. Okay. Where is the fruit? What's up there? Okay, not a bad start. This one is kind of familiar. I think I might have played it before. Oh. be one of those levels. Uh, I'll save my ammo for him later on. Yeah, I've definitely played this one once or twice. Is that with the green door? Where is the green? Is that down here? It's up there. Let's take it, let's go. That's what we need that for. Gotcha. Okay. Not bad. Oh, I don't think I... Yep, there we go. So there's no sign, there's nothing that tells you that there's going to be a hidden gem in those. It's just, um, as I mentioned a little while ago, a matter of learning somebody's design conventions and their design language for levels and figuring out where they're likely to be.
Is there really nothing else down here? Okay. It's just a pretty little set piece. Right, okay, that last switch was for that last moving platform. Which will take us to the end. So, a bit of a long level. Um, but I say that having finished this level a bit quicker than some of the others. Not bad. We might do one more level. Advent Calendar 21. We'll do two more levels. I know what that next one is. Are these spikes going to fall on me? No! Nor are these rocks going to walk at me. Pretty straightforward so far. That's annoying. So if you fall down here, you're meant to shoot that so you can jump out. That's fairly straightforward. Goodbye, bird. Oh, and same deal with down there. That's okay. This this one's got an interesting little design to it. Uh, I may have to start this one again. Let's see how it goes. That's pretty straightforward. This is interesting. Satisfying. Um, we've come here too early. Can we get back down there? Yes. Okay, well, there's the key down there. I should have... Oh no, I've completely screwed this. Unless... Oh, this is cool. One more go. We'll move on to the last level for tonight. <laughs> it's nearly felt like we did the same thing. Now, what I screwed up earlier is not shooting that guy over here. Because once this door opens, I somehow got him stuck here, which meant I would not have been able to jump back up there. Um, let's go down here first. Take care of this nonsense. <sighs> oh, let's turn that one off. Has that turned this one off too? Yes. Okay. I like the idea of that, but that is a very tough little puzzle. Um, it would take... It would certainly take me several goes to figure out the exact timing and positioning for that. Right. 
sorry if I've got a bit quiet. I am actually concentrating pretty hard at this point. It's kind of late at night. And I don't want to make a complete fool of myself. I do need the key to open the treasure chest, but I'm here and I've got all the gems. Nah, I'm out. <laughs> kind of a tough level, that one. Right. Last level I'm going to do tonight is to play another of my remakes. I guess to wind down a little bit. So this is a remake of possibly the most notorious level in the first episode of this game. Um, I changed things around a little bit. I've changed the order of operations, I've changed where you have to go. And when. And I flipped the level back to front. Did I turn that off yet? So if you've played the original game, you would immediately recognize this level with a tiny bit of confusion. Simply because it is entirely backwards. How... How cruel was I with the ammo supply? Not too bad. Haven't got the key yet. Did I put the key down there? No. Where did I put the key? Ah, uh, this bit. Oh, I put it behind this little puzzle. Right. Right, that's all the gems. This is the victory walk through all the treasure chests. And it looks like I'll be able to finish it with perfect health. It would be kind of embarrassing if I didn't, considering this is my level. So there's some down there, there's some here as well. Uh, I don't think I put any up here, but let's go grab them anyway. Should be it, that is it. And we are out of here. Not least because my headset just ran out of battery. Perfect timing. Okay. That is it for tonight. That is a lot of levels completed. I don't know when I will continue on with this, but um, I definitely want to do more. There's a whole lot more levels to do that um, are definitely worth checking out. Um, but yeah, this game is on Steam. It's it's a few bucks. Um, if you played the original or think you might 
enjoy a really nice little uh, platformer, um, check it out. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me in this. Um, I guess follow me on Twitch and you'll see when I go live with the next lot. So, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good night.